and the message was for us to, to remember his words. Remember everything that God has said to you through his word, through somebody else. Things that you know that God has said to you, about you, for you. Remember those words. Because that's what is going to get us through. That's what's going to keep us wanting more of him. That's what's going to keep us there. This week we're going to go a little bit past that. We're going to go verses 20, or excuse me, 13. To 32. Maybe a little more. Because here we have the situation. Last week's verses were the resurrection account where the ladies went to the went to the grave to, to, to prepare Jesus' body. But he wasn't there. He wasn't there. And the two men with the bleeding clothes that were bleeding like white naked. Mm -hmm. Told them, asked them, challenged them, why are you looking for the, the living among the dead? All right. Okay. They knew what was going to happen. They knew what Jesus had, said, had, had already said, but they didn't know how it was going to happen. So they were going about what they normally knew to do. And here we go. So we're going to do what we normally do. But the game has changed because he's not here. So go tell the disciples that, that he's not here. Go tell them that he's going forward ahead of them and he's going to meet them. So they took off to tell them. And the disciples, here you we have the women now, okay? They 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 experienced the crucifixion. They saw the body buried, they saw the tomb sealed. The angel came down, moved the stone, they coming down. He, he's telling them, all right, go go let them know. So they have eyewitness account. They're going to telling the disciples. The disciples, who first and foremost should have been anticipating. What Jesus had said, but they let what their eyes saw and what their emotions experienced let them forget what Jesus had said. So here they come. They run to the. Now give them credit. They ran to the tomb. All right, whether they wanted to be the first to prove the women wrong or the first to, to see it, I don't know. But they ran to the tomb and they got there and they... <clears throat> But instead of rejoicing, instead of saying, Ah, that's it. It's on now. <laughs> he he got oh it's about to it's about to go now. No, they walked away wondering what had happened. Marveling at So here we go. <laughs> Verse 13. I'm going to read from the New International Version. I might jump from version to version. I'll let you know when I do. <laughs> but I'm going to start off in the NIV. And it says, now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were walking with each other, talking about everything that had happened. And as they walked, as they talked, and discuss these things with each other. Jesus himself came up and walked along All right, with now. them. Okay. But they were kept from recognizing him. Mm. It's going to happen sometimes. Ah, he's, never know. And he asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? And they stood still with their faces downcast. Mm. And one of them, named Cleophas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem? Do you not know the things that, that have happened there in these days? Mm. What things, he asked. This Jesus, come on now. Jesus, this, this lets you know God has a sense of humor. Why, why are you clowning up in here? Okay, why? Why? 
But he's trying to get them to a certain place. He's trying to get them to a certain place. Well, what, what things are you talking about? About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He, he was, he, they say he was. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God. And all the people, the chief priests and our rulers, handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. Run, run. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. And they came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And some of our companions went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, and him they did not see. <laughs> now I gotta be easy here because I found myself in this position. I, we I'm going to say I, I. I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody because I have found myself in this position. God has said something was going to happen. He spoke that something was going to happen. And I put in my mind, all right, God said this is going to happen. So I, I, I <laughs> formulated in my mind how this is going to happen. So when things start going down the way God desires for them to go down, okay, now I, I'm in a place where it didn't happen the way I think it was going to happen. So now, because it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen, no matter God spoke it to me, it didn't go down the way I thought it was going to happen. So now I just totally forget what God said altogether. Okay. Thank you. I'm not alone. I feel much better now. I feel much better now. But see, here, this is where they are. And this is a perfect example of how we as believers do things today. God speaks it in, in, in no uncertain terms. He let them know, guess what? One of you is going to betray me. I'm going to be given over to death. All of that happened. Oh my. They watched it happen. But the fact that it happened made them totally forget what he said. <laughs> How do you experience what God has said and then totally forget that it was God that told you that was going to happen? We do that. We do that. We do that. But God being the merciful God, the all knowing God that he is, <laughs> that God that gives us all those things that we can't touch. Because certainly we would lose it, forget it, or give it away. That's right. If we could touch it, we would trade it for something that we think is going to be better. Some beanstalk beans or something. I don't know. <laughs> we would get tricked out of the good things. But here Jesus comes along. He's not even, this is the beauty of it. It's, it's Jesus. He doesn't reveal himself as Jesus. But he is spurring them on. He's a, well, their faces are downcast. They're sad. They they went to the tomb. They heard, they, it's like some of our friends, they went to the tomb. The ladies were there. They came and said Jesus wasn't there. And now they, uh and, and, and our boys, they went to the tomb and they saw that he wasn't there either. So, and, and he's not there. This is the third day. All of these events should point them back to what Jesus said, but it didn't. They're like, well, you know what? The two that are talking, you know what? Let's, let's go to Emmaus. Seven miles. Walking, okay. Walking seven miles. That's a long walk. Amen. From here to our house is about eight miles. And I'm not doing that. <laughs> nah. Every step of the way, I might be thumbing, I'm praying, Lord, send the cast, send somebody, Lord. But they're walking. They're walking to Emmaus. Seven miles is a seven mile walk. On this walk, there's a lot of time. There's going to be a lot of time for them to just talk. 
Walking seven miles is a lot of time to talk. Then when you walk with a person who talks a lot. Okay. And you you know, that might make the trip longer. <laughs> it's only seven miles. <laughs> it's like 12, 20. <laughs> Be quiet. No, no. But they're walking along, they're having a conversation. They're just having a conversation. But they're downcast. They're sad about the events that have happened. The necessary events. Jesus said this has to happen. So that I can go, so that so that man can be, so the salvation can come, and the relationship can be restored with the Father, so that men can be saved. But the events that Jesus foretold, the events that they experienced, went down, and they're now on their way to Emmaus, and they're downcast. For whatever reason, they're just they're downcast. Jesus comes along and says, uh, "What's wrong?" What's, 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 what's wrong? And they turn on him. Oh, are you a stranger? Hello? Have you not? Did you not hear? Hello? Did you not see Facebook? Did you not check Twitter? Okay. Jesus, and this is their this is their idea. Jesus is dead now. He was a prophet. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. We had hoped. Never mind all the miracles he performed. <laughs> Never mind the, the healings. Never mind the fact that he raised people from the dead. Never mind the fact that he spoke to nature and nature obeyed. Never mind all of that. The fact that he's now no longer physically with us. Wow. We can't believe it ended like that. We can't believe it, it, it he went out like that. So the foretold, the fulfilling of the foretold events have them in this place. It's just so sad. But here, here we find ourselves in that position. Quite a lot. And it's 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 significant that is the physical death of somebody that we know. Because that's the probably the single worst experience that we can go through in our lives experience the death of a loved one. Jesus was a loved one. Them. He was a friend, he was a mentor, he was a pastor, he was a teacher, he was a prophet. He was, a, he was so many things to these men. He poured his life into them for them to see him die and, and, and go away. It was an emotional, traumatic experience. But, and it's really hard to say this, it shouldn't have been that traumatic. Because they you know who he is. And anything he said means anything to you then how can you be sad when he says, I'm coming back? He says, on the third day I will rise. They go to the tomb and it's empty. That means he arose. How can you be sad? That's right. Mm, yep, I'm out. But that's what we do. When God's spoken word happens to us the way he says it's going to happen, and we get to the point, well, <coughs> was that you, God? Was that, was that you, God? I must have missed my yeah. I wonder if it was, I was, I was deceived again. But, but see, that's, that's our emotion. That's our eyes. That's, that's, that's everything that we're supposed to have control over. Because that Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, bookended by love and self-control he gives us self-control so that we control those emotions so that we control that's why we said we walk by faith and not by sight to their defense the disciples did not have that scripture <laughs> couldn't flip to that scripture in their in their in their in their, in their, in their king james bible and like oh yes we must walk by faith and not by sight no they did not have huh. that okay hmm. But they had three years of experience with the Word, with the Savior, with the man himself. And here they are, but they still find themselves in this position. And Jesus says, okay, all right. That's, I don't know where been now. I just got to shake them up. I just got to do something. Yeah, get, get it out of here. Verse 25. Okay, okay, okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> now, they've been through a traumatic experience. They've experienced the death of a friend. 
Okay, sad. Oh, I'm, I'm sad. I, I must be allowed my time to mourn. I need some me time. I, 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 I. This is, there's a lot of I in there. Mm -hmm. Now, because this experience was what it was, because the, it was the death of Jesus, it was, and never mind the fact, okay, put that on the shelf so for right now, the fact that he said it was going to happen, <laughs> that everything that he said was going to happen has happened. Okay. And they should be, they should be excited, they should be encouraged at this point, but they're sad because now Jesus was, and we had hoped, but okay, here they are in this, in this sad spot. But Jesus their desire, their desire is that somebody would come along and like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Go ahead and mourn. Go ahead and weep. Go ahead and cry. Mm -hmm. But that was not the time for that. That was, It wasn't even appropriate at that time. A time of mourning. Why? Why? Because he was alive. But they're mourning. Why? Why are you more? The grave is empty. And they're wanting somebody to, to come along and they're talking to each other and neither one tells the other one, you know, it, it, it would have been appropriate for if, if just one of them had been encouraged. And the other one turns and says, oh, you know, I'm feeling kind of sad that, you know, Jesus died the way he did. And I had hoped that he was going to, it would have been totally appropriate if the other one had been encouraged for him to just, <laughs> Fire up that face. She played. Just, you know, put it on in one good time. It would have been appropriate. It would have been appropriate. But here comes Jesus. Lamb of God. Rose of Sharon. Prince of Peace. <laughs> And his words to them in verse 25, how foolish are you? <laughs> and slow of heart <laughs> to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter into glory? Basically, in the spirit, pow! <laughs> Slap that face. Mm -hmm. How foolish are you? Really? Really? I said it was going to happen. It happened the way I said it was going to happen. You see the final product of what I said was going to happen, and here you are mourning. Sad, down, and dejected. Pow! Oh, how to not just forget what I told you, but slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Basically, the word. That's all the word that they had. They had Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And they had the words of the prophets. <laughs> that was the word. That was the word of God that they had. That's all that they had. And every single New Old Testament book points to Christ. He had taught and preached from these very scriptures. He spoke it. Oh, how foolish you are. And slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for Christ to suffer these things and enter into glory? Didn't I tell you that this was going to happen? That's what he's telling them. Again, pow! Oh, how foolish you are. Pow with the backhand. Yes, the backhand. Ah. Didn't I tell you all of this was going to happen? And that wasn't enough. That, 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 it wasn't over right there. When we find ourselves in a position where we necessarily shouldn't be, quote unquote, emotionally, because that's, that's where we are and that's, we should be allowed to process our emotions. Because Dr. Phil said that <laughs> I need to process my emotions. Okay. I have to go through the steps. 
you know, the, the, the denial and all. I have to go through all of these. Okay, so let let me try to be real for a minute. No, be faithful. Be righteous. God's not saying turn off your emotions. He's saying let those emotions point you back to him. That's all he's saying. Don't you know, if they, if everything that they had just, if they had re just remembered the words that Jesus said, if they had gone back to, instead of letting their emotions pull them away from the truth, you grab those emotions, because they're going to come. They're in us. God put them there for a reason. Well, you grab those emotions, and you bring them back to the word. Amen. That's what he's saying do. That's what he's saying to do right here. Do you not remember everything? And everything that all the prophets spoke. Bring those emotions to the word. Don't let those emotions, because those emotions will take you yes, where they feel yes, like going. That's right. Where they feel like going. That's right. The good ones and the bad ones. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> Everywhere you don't need to be. Yeah, yeah. What he's telling me. And then he says, <laughs> and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning themselves. <laughs> concerning himself, thank you. <laughs> concerning himself. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Here's a little crash course. Here's a little reminder. Here's a little reminder. We're on our way to Emmaus. We got seven miles to walk. We got time. We got time. They had no watches. They have the sun in the sky. Let me remind you what the scripture said. What the scripture said. But see, sometimes we get to that place where we're processing our emotions and it's and it's this we, we lost a friend we lost a loved one we're, we're so sad because no one loves us we have no friends we have this and that and we want to process our emotions and one of our friends comes up and tells us what the word says but we don't want to hear the word we, why are you always you know why is it always been happy to be about the word with you can't we just talk can i just process my emotions can i just can I just do it? No, you cannot. No, you cannot. If you're going to process those emotions, you're not processing the word. You need to be processing the word. That's what he's saying. And so, just as a little reminder, it says, he didn't hold anything back. Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Hmm. <laughs> There's 39 books in the old in the Old Testament. That's a lot of talking on that way. Seven miles. Seven. If we walk from here to my house, I could get through the whole Old Testament on you. <laughs> I could, right. trust me. We're not gonna try it. Because I'm not walking that, I told you. That's, that's too far. Sometimes I get tired just driving. But here we go. He reminds them of everything that the scripture said about him. Granted, they still don't know that it's him yet. They still don't know that it's him yet. Verse 28 says, as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, saying, stay with us. For it is nearly the evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When they sat at the table with him, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. <laughs> and he disappeared from their sight. Jesus has been with them this whole time. My He's been reminding them of, of who he is. He showed them in all the scriptures. And then without... Just without without handing out his card, <laughs> you know, breaking open his Twitter account. Like, uh, it's, it's, you see, <laughs> no, he just he did what he normally did in front of him. 
okay. the way that he did it in front of them, the manner in which they were recognized. And all it says is, <laughs> he took he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, and it was at that point that they realized. That their eyes were open and they recognized him. All right. And at that point, he disappeared from their sight. Man. <laughs> and they asked each other, were our hearts not burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened up all the scriptures to us? Were not our hearts burning within us? <laughs> we need to get a little heartburn sometimes. <laughs> We need to get a little heartburn sometimes when we go through those tough times, when, 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 when our situations, our circumstances, when they're just so overwhelming to us, we need to come back to the Word. We need to come back to the Word. Take those emotions and drag them right back to the Word. Put them in there and just slam the book on them. Get them under control. Put them on the table if you have to. Bang! Slam the Bible down on them. But we have to. It has to be about the word, what the word says. Because Jesus brought them back to the word. He didn't even let them see who he was until the, the until they weren't even talking about the word anymore. Now it's time to eat. Now it's time to just break bread. They weren't, it wasn't a ceremony, it wasn't a a, 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 a feast or anything that they were partaking of. It was just dinner. It was just dinner. Come on in and eat with us. For the evening is far spent. It's late. It's getting late. The street lights about to come on. Come on in. Come on in and have dinner with us. And it was at that point. It was at that point. They, they didn't like, they, they, they weren't to the point of, you know what? They didn't like Jesus. Huh. Okay. They didn't like Jesus. Hmm. They whispered to each other. Jesus. Is that going to come in with us? All right. No, don't say that. No, don't say that. All right. Come on in and have dinner with us, old stranger. No, it, they didn't know. They still didn't know. Their eyes were still kept from recognizing him. Because if they had recognized him right away, again, the emotion. All right, all right. The emotion of seeing him again. It washed away the truth of the word. Flood of emotion would have brought back everything that they were thinking should have happened. Mm -hmm. All of that. Oh, okay. Now, what I thought, Jesus is back now. Now, what I thought was going to happen, now it's going to happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. But he had to bring them back to the word and get them rooted in the word. Mm -hmm. Everything. Because even when he reminded them back then, he said, was it not necessary for, for Jesus to experience these things? Was it not necessary? But here it is now. At dinner, he takes the bread. Blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it. And their eyes are open, and they see him. And he disappears. Then they ask each other, oh, our hearts not burning with him. Talk with us on the road and open up the scriptures. Their hearts weren't burning when they were talking to each other. Their hearts were sad and downcast when they were talking to each other. Because what they had seen, what they had experienced, and what they were feeling all outweighed the truth of the word. All outweighed truth of the word. Nothing should ever outweigh the truth of the word in our lives. Nothing should ever outweigh the truth of the word in our lives. The truth of the word should be so powerful and so strong in our lives. Picture this illustration. One brick and a five-crown brick and a 
ten pound box of feathers. Which one is heavier? The feathers. The feathers. Because they weigh ten pounds. <laughs> right? <laughs> Duh. Simple math. No. <laughs> One one brick, one feather, and brick outweighs. The word is like a feather. We'll get to take the word in its entirety. The word in its entirety, all these feathers. situation is, whatever the circumstances is in our life, it's just a brick. Mm -hmm. It's just a brick. It's just a five pound brick. But we need to take the weight of this word. It's way more than ten pounds. It's way more than ten pounds. And this word breaks yokes. This word changes things. Don't let anything out weigh the truth of the word. I don't care what it is. And it's a real hard thing to say, but no matter what person we may lose in our life. I can't count how many number of movies I've seen where a believer or a pastor or a Christian pastor loses his wife. Oh, now crisis of life. Is God real? I'm not a pastor anymore because God let my wife die. And I, I'm not downplaying that by any stretch, but I'm talking about movies, okay? Mm -hmm. Movies. But the loss of a loved one does not mean the truth of the word. I know it's hard to hear. It's not easy to say. But even that, even that cannot outweigh the truth of the word. Because the truth of the word, God says, I know the thoughts I have for you. Thoughts to prosper you and not harm you. To bring you to an expected end. To his expected end, not to our expected end. Because our expected end pales in comparison to what God has for us. So even, even, Whatever it is that pulls at our heartstrings, whatever it is that pulls at our heartstrings, cannot, cannot outweigh the word. We cannot let it outweigh the word. The enemy is going to attack and he's going to pull at those heartstrings with everything that he has. With everything that he has, but it cannot, we cannot allow it to outweigh the word in our mind. We take those heart strings, <laughs> we tie them to the word, the anchor over here, here's the picture. <clears throat> over here, the heart strings are tied to the word, hanging out. Mm -hmm. the situation happens, very emotional, it's very hard to deal with. That's the enemy. He's coming over here. He's trying to hook this chain to our heart. He's got a chain. It's a big old you see the chains on like a, a cruise ship to hold the big anchor. He's got that. He's got that. And it's hooked to a big old army tank. And you pull it in that direction. But our heart strings, our heart, the words in our heart. The reason why they said that our hearts not burn within us, the heart is, it's, it's, it, that's our anchor. That's God's operations central operations point in our life. The heart. Psalm 19, 9, 11. How can a young man keep his way pure? <laughs> I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. When the word is hidden in our heart, that word is hidden in our heart, heart strings tied to the word, word is hidden in our heart, we got hurt, the word is our anchor in our heart and everything, we're here chilling, we got this big emotional situation that comes up, the enemy comes up with that big anchor chain, it's tied to a big old army tank, and he hits the gas, those things are not fast, but they are strong, and it's pulling, and it's just pulling, and it's just pulling. But we go 
to the symbol of scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Boom! The chain just broke. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Chain just broke. Yeah. And here we are just chilling. All understanding. Yes, yes. Guarding our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus. We have to let the word be an anchor in our life. The reason why Jesus, why you <clears throat> why do you think the 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 that the, when Jesus got in the boat and told the disciples, let's go over to the other side, that Jesus fell asleep. Yes, he was tired. Yes, he was tired. But on a pitching boat, he's just crashed out to the point where he's, they, they got to wake him up. Don't you care? We're going to die. <laughs> just whining. Jesus doesn't want us to be concerned about the storm. He doesn't want us to be concerned about the storm. He doesn't want us to be afraid of the storm. All right. Because he said, let's go to the other side. Okay. When he says, let's go to the other side, he means let's get to the other side. Jesus didn't say, let's get to the other side. I'm going to go to sleep. The storm's going to come up, and we're going to have to swim the rest of the way. That was not what he said. He said, let's get to the other side. Jesus went to the other side. They went to the other side. It required them to... They was going to make it whether they woke him up or not. Jesus was getting to the other side. Jesus was getting to the other side. Don't fear a storm. Don't fear a storm. Don't run out. You know what? Jesus rebuked the storm. Told the storm to be quiet. But you know what else Jesus did in the storm? Walked on the water. All right. He didn't just walk on the water. He invited somebody else to come and walk with him. Yes. Sure. Get out of the boat. Come walk with me on the water through the storm. But you see, but you see, for as much as we want to make fun of Peter and look down at Peter, oh, look at you, Peter. Oh, you with little faith. And when Jesus says little faith there, he's talking about short attention span faith, ADD faith, if you will. Because his faith was good as long as he had his eye on Jesus, but this wave caught his eye. As soon as he took his eye off Jesus, he began to sink All right. down in there. Mm -hmm. But you know what? He didn't sink far before he called out to Jesus, and Jesus pulled him up out of the water. Peter's hair didn't even get wet because Jesus pulled him up out. But all of that is to say, don't fear the storm. All right. The storm is coming. Don't fear the storm. Know that the storm is only there to demonstrate God's power. To keep you through the storm. That's when God's power is manifest. What does the word tell us? When we're at our weakest, what? His power is perfected. He's at his best when we're at our weakest. As we're going through that storm, God's power is best manifested. Glory. When they were just walking to Emmaus, there was no power demonstrated there. There was none needed. Jesus didn't come and what, blow all the dust off the road so that it would be less dusty? No, there was no miracle needed there. There was no power demonstration needed there. All that was needed was the word. He brought the word. He put the word and it burned in their heart. Mm -hmm. We have to get that word inside our heart. We get that word inside our heart by reading his word, by praying and talking to God. Let him reveal himself to us by coming together and worshiping together. Reading the word on our own, coming together and worshiping, praying together, fellowshipping with the Lord, fellowshipping with one another. We need to get that word down inside our heart. So that when we do find ourselves in a place where we shouldn't be emotionally, somewhere that our has to do is somebody just speak the word to us and it begins to burn in our heart and it begins to burn in our heart <laughs> he, 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 it's beautiful that he said well while he was talking 
Because it says he was he was going through Moses and all the prophets, reminding them of everything that the word said about Jesus. They didn't know that it was Jesus reminding them what the word said about him, but they didn't know. But as they were going along, it burned inside their heart. It burned inside their heart because it had already been placed there at some point. It wasn't a fresh planting going on. Because that doesn't burn. <laughs> but it had to be already down in there. So we got to get that word inside of us so that it keeps us, so that we're not fearing the storm. So that when we get into, so that so that we can step into a fire and not be burned. So that we can go into a lion's den and not be consumed. God's example of, of keeping us and maintaining us throughout, letting us, letting us get to those points so that his power can be demonstrated. God's power is never demonstrated. If those men aren't jealous of the three Hebrew boys, if they don't, if they, if they, if they slap. If they don't get jealous and try to set up Daniel, God's mm. power is never demonstrated. God's power is never demonstrated. If they didn't have haters, God's power is never demonstrated. But God demonstrated his power that they might be saved. That the haters might be saved. Jesus came to save sinners, not to shame them. So let the power of God rise up. Let the word of God anchor your heart so that those around you can see his, see the power of God demonstrated as you go through. Not so that they can be put to shame, but so that they can see that God is real. <clears throat> so that they can know that God does love you and that, they, that he does care about what it is that you're going through. And so that they can know that they can have it for themselves. love how Jesus did Why are you sad? Why? Why is your conversation like this? I know what you just went through. I know. I was there. But I know what you just went through. But why? Why are you sad? Why are you sad? Again, and it's not that they were in sin because of their emotions, but allowing the, the sight and the experience and the feelings to outweigh what had already been said, what had already been spoken, what they knew they knew was going to happen, what had been confirmed by eyewitness account. So he gently brought him back. Oh, you fool and slow of heart. Pow. Hmm. He did what was needed to bring them back. Amen. Amen. So get the word in your heart. Don't, don't, don't fear heartburn. Look forward to some heartburn. Believe the word. Trust the word. Your situation and circumstance that you're going through, no matter how hard, no matter how difficult, no matter how trying, doesn't make God's word any less true. No matter what your eyes see, no matter what your emotions tell you, you go back to the word. You go back to the word. You go back to what you know God has spoken to you. You go back to what you know he's put in his word regarding you. Go back to the word. It always comes back to the word. Always be about seeking the Lord. Always be about, that's why the scripture reminds us, Matthew 6, 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. We don't, and, sorry, it's all over again, never mind, hold on. <laughs> nah, nah, I ain't gonna do it, I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> we just have to be reminded. Just keep God. Don't let anything, don't let any one, any one, no man's words should ever, ever have us questioning God's word. That's right. No man's words should ever, ever outweigh anything that God has said about right. us, Amen. to us, Amen. for us, around us. No man's words should ever outweigh that. <laughs> Not what anybody thinks about us. 
not anything should ever, ever, ever. If it does, it's because we turned away from the word. And if we turned away from the word, don't look at God. That's what talking about. What did what, you do? He's going to tell you. Oh, you fools. Oh, you foolish. And slow of heart to believe. No, no. <laughs> so he's, he's not he's not adverse to doing it. We see that in the word. He'll give us what we need to turn us back around to him. Amen. 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 Give God some praise today. Amen.